Hi guys, uh, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the beautiful comments that you've left on the giveaway. So whew, I just got through um, replying to them all, so I really appreciate it. And one of my favorite uh, quotes is something I saw quite a few years ago, and it says, um, if you have two loaves of bread, sell one and buy a hyacinth for it will feed thy soul. And, you know, but especially in times like these, sometimes we need both loaves of bread. So I'm hoping that my videos can be, you know, I can offer you a hyacinth in them. So, and since it's autumn, and I know a lot of you have really enjoyed just uh, sort of playing with color the same as I did when I was starting and just color mixing, I thought this would be a fun way to kind of uh, go to the next step. So we're just going to paint a simple leaf shape on the page and drop in a few different colors. And um, we're going to do that, you know, across the page. So we're trying to make like a pretty shape as if we're standing underneath a tree. And um, then we're going to let these first leaves dry and we're going to go over them with another layer so if you've watched the transparent florals videos it's something like that but it's a little bit simpler and it's just a really fun way to celebrate like autumn i know everyone's not having autumn at the minute but um, it's autumn here and there's just sprinkles of you know these like crimson colors everywhere so i thought it would be a nice exercise so i'm just using the colors that are in the regular palette that i generally use on the channel and I'm trying to pick um, colors that make me think of autumn and then also just seeing if I can add some of my favorite colors here like the opera rose and the potter's pink so they're not exactly found you know outside in the trees at the minute but I wanted to incorporate them into the painting so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of going around and painting like a pretty simple leaf shape uh, and I am twisting it a little bit to the right a little bit to the left uh, and just sort of trying to make the leaves look a little bit more natural so the colors that I'm using and th these are the sort of the colors that I'll use for the whole uh, video is the pyrrole orange the organic vermilion lemon yellow um, French ochre roasted French ochre um, the potter's pink opera rose moonstone and is that it and hematite I think and the German green raw umber and what surprised me actually is just knowing the palette and I'm not really I've never really um, done kind of autumn colors it's not really what I gravitate towards but I was interested like I just kind of I found some new sort of color combinations and things so this is why it's good to paint out of your comfort zone sometimes uh, and so you can see here that I'm just doing like the simple leaf shape again I'm kind of then I'm kind of trying to make it a little bit wonky if you will just to make it look a little bit more natural and I'm just trying different color combinations so putting the roasted French ochre down with a little bit of the opera rose and the lemon yellow uh, this next one's going to be French ochre with moonstone and the German green raw umber so I think these are all Daniel Smith possible I think they're all Daniel Smith uh, except for the Potter's Pink which is Windsor and Newton so and I I do have a palette swatch of this palette on the channel as well but this was just a really fun exercise and you can see that I'm not even taking my time here like to uh, blend them smoothly so I'm not softening the transitions I'm not worrying about any blooms or backwash I'm just putting everything into the leaf and just um, seeing how things mix on the page uh, seeing if I like the color combinations and just generally it's sort of basically color swatching it's just kind of the next step so reading all, of your <laughs> reading all of your comments has helped me just kind of better understand, you know, how to, like, it's hard to f sort of figure out how to structure, see the beautiful 
um, movement and flow there but uh, I it's hard to figure out how to structure like what to put in the videos how to go from beginners to intermediate uh, to advanced and um, you know things that I'm still working on myself and you know how do you kind of make those transitions so this is a really good one if you are a beginner and you're just wanting to try something a little bit extra and even if you are more advanced this is a really good one just to go back to basics and try some different colors out of your color comfort color comfort zone and so i was trying all these different sort of colors and then i realized i have this little bit of bordeaux in my palette so you can see i'm also showing you here this new Escoda, no, what is it? It's the Da Vinci Maestro liner brush in the two. And so I'm just kind of showing you how I'm gonna be using it. I, again, like this is very loose and kind of more of a color study. So um, I'm not doing everything very particularly, but I just, I'm just showing you, this is the type of way that I'll be using it. It's a really nice one for if you do the light control. So it's not nice if you light control, but if you do want, um, if you, if you are struggling with too much control and you want to be a bit freer uh, and a bit more expressive, then this is a good one to try. So and you can see that I'm just mixing up uh, colors that I think will complement the uh, leaves. And I'm also doing this so the, the leaves are still damp. I haven't waited till they're fully dry. I'm, I'm just doing it while they're still damp. Okay, so you can see some close-ups there. You can see sort of the colors I've chosen and how I've scattered them across the page here. So some are coming down, you know, um, longer and then they go up and then they come down long but a little bit shorter and then again, the same thing. So and then I've also done a little frame at the side with the letter A for autumn. So, you know, you could leave the page like this. You could just do leaves on a page if you want, but uh, if you want to, you can uh, wait until they're all dry, completely dry, and then um, you just start layering leaves over the top of each other, you know, and because watercolor is transparent, you get these beautiful, um, it becomes like this sort of transparent forest. It's really pretty. So you can see that I am trying to place colors next to each other that haven't been next to each other. So this is a little bit of the Bordeaux. I had some on the palette, did I mention this? And I uh, wanted to sort of use that up and I thought that now would be a really nice time to try it and just to see how it works. And I really like it. So I actually, I feel like I like it a lot more when it's um, the colors a little bit more luminous when it's wet when it dries it's a bit duller but you can use like a perylone violet or something else like that that you have and um, or you can mix something with like a blue and a red that's similar to this as well <laughs> So 
I know that uh, a few of you have Bordeaux as well and aren't sure what to do with it. So I thought this would be nice to kind of experiment with it and we can find some things that we can paint with it. So this is the uh, green umber and it and then I put the French ochre and the moonstone in with it. So I'm really loving the way the moonstone's dispersing. Uh, you can use the pearl white and mix it with like a, a, a black and that'll give a similar effect, just a little bit of black to get this sort of soft cool grey. <laughs> Okay, so you can see how our tree's coming together here and when, you know, with the close-ups, it's looking really nice. So, you know, you, um, yeah, anyway. So now, what am I doing now? I think I am just going through with the liner and sort of putting some little wisps of stems on the leaves. And again, like I said, you, you know, you can stop at any type at any time in this process. So you could just do a few leaves on a page and just try, uh, you know, a few different color combos. You don't have to do this kind of multi-layered uh, situation here. So I just kept going and going. And then I think after I put these, and I was just also really enjoying um, this new color palette as well. So I, after I do this, um, we do a, a few more things. We add some gold. Uh, some finishing touches with the gold ink but you can see here that I'm just making a record and you know swatching the colors that we've used so I like to always do that because sometimes you can't necessarily tell once you've mixed them on the page which ones they were <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just going into this frame and we are going to do a video on these and kind of where I started uh, drawing them and how and why and everything like that. So that will be coming up probably in two weeks. Uh, and so yeah, I'm just going in here and I am doing, um, and I love it when you guys like ask questions. If you've asked me about a video and I haven't sort of gotten on, on the list yet you know feel free to keep nudging me um but yeah I love it when you you know let me know you'd like more information about this or that that helps me to figure figure it out but anyway so there's a few different ways that you can uh do these like sort of an accent on the page now you could just do this like in an oval with a fancy letter um you know this or just like a simple crest uh, but I am wanting it to blend in so I you know I could do it with like um, the Bordeaux and like Opera Rose but I just want it to kind of blend in with the you know tree so I'm just using French ochre roasted French ochre and hematite and then I use the moonstone for the A and so now I'm going back with my favorite Winsor & Newton gold ink and so many of you have said that you love this as well so I'm really glad about that um, and I love it when you let me know you know uh, if you're 
um, enjoying the products and some sometimes like you'll have a question about so feel free to ask that as well but so you can see here I am just taking my dip pen and you know I've had some questions from a few of you and these gold nibs really make the difference so I know they're out of stock at the minute um, I'm hoping that they'll come back in stock soon but these just make such a difference they glide effort effortlessly on the page there's not like that sort of scratching um, feeling and they're just a really beautiful tool to work with so if you can you're looking for the E&M gold nibs sometimes they will come already on a I think I've, I might have seen them like a cult pens or somewhere they're already on a um, holder so I'll see if I can link that but yeah so once I finished the frame I felt a little bit like I wanted to just try um, so I wasn't sure if I was going to just finish the video here and I was just kind of playing around here um, and yeah then I ended up really liking this so I've left this in and basically what I'm just doing is you can see I'm holding the dip pen far back so I don't have a lot of control over it and I am not actually I'm not following the lines I'm actually sort of going around them either outside them or inside them so I'm trying to have them not overlap or so I'm thinking in musical terms here syncopation I don't want the detail I don't want the line to match up with the outer line I want to create layering here so um, and then also when I'm doing the line inside like the vein lines I also want those to overlap and not join up with the ones I've painted and it starts to look like there's you know more like there's multiple things going on here and multiple layers like on a leaf so I will do some close-ups and you'll be able to see what I mean a little bit better so we're kind of building up even though these are transparent so it, it becomes really beautiful because you've got the transparency but you've also got these overlapping layers and it's really nice So this is basically it. Again, you don't have to use the uh, nib pen. You could use a paintbrush, even like a liner brush would be really nice for the gold or just, you know, any kind of a brush you can use uh, to create a similar effect. So this is just the way that I, you know, like to work, but you can use whatever you've got um, available or just if you like different mediums and things like that, you can do similar things with it. You can see the really fine hairline strokes there with the dip pen and where I've sort of barely um, touched the surface and that's one thing as well so if you even if you're putting the color down don't scrub the paper you don't have to like scrub the color you just can let it blend you're just dropping it on the page and I'd love to hear what colors you guys think of when you want to paint autumn so used to be for me that even shell pink again but I I really tried to go out of you know my regular palette here like I'm, I'm sure I could do a kind of shell pink pyrrole orange and French ochre kind of a softer color palette but I wanted to use some of these uh, deeper richer colors and see you know what would come of them so I'm really uh, happy and I think that yeah it would be nice to know what you guys would like to or you know how you think of um, autumn colors and how you would paint it and let me know if you try this and 
you have any questions or you know how you enjoy it and I will leave you with a little bit of footage from um, the weekend and the autumn trees actually this was a few weeks ago we have barely any leaves left now so it feels like autumn's just come and gone really um, just in the blink of an eye so we actually had snow even for a couple of hours this week um, which I didn't get any footage of but uh, it's obviously gonna start snowing soon so I'm sending all my best and I will see you guys in the next video bye